Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to focus on how we might go about measuring the degree of market concentration in an industry. So market concentration, what does it mean? Well, the concentration ratio is essentially the market share of firms in the market relative to other firms in the industry. And one of the obvious ways of measuring this is to use something called the concentration ratio. And this simply measures the combined market share of the leading N firms in the industry. Now, share could be by any metric we choose. It could be by the value of sales, by jobs, or well, any other relevant indicator. Typically, the data you're, gi you're given in exams is the percentage of total sales in a market. The value of N can be any number. It's often five, but it could be three or any small number. And if the value of the top end firms have a high market share, the industry therefore has become more highly concentrated. So, for example, if we took the top five firms in an industry and calculated their combined market share, we'd get what's called the C5 concentration ratio. And any C5 ratio of, let's say, more than 60% would tell us that the industry was an oligopoly. Here's an example of the C5 ratio using some data from the mobile phone industry in the UK in the summer of 2014. You can see Samsung and Apple are way out ahead of the other firms. Uh, together, those two firms have uh, over 50% of the market. But if we put together Samsung, Apple, Nokia, Sony and HTC, we find that those top five firms have over 84% of the industry. This is clearly an oligopoly. Here's an example of a dominant monopoly, something to just to chew over for a few seconds. Wrigley's in the United States have nearly 60% of the market for chewing gum. They clearly have a very dominant, well-established monopoly position. And if we look at the soft drinks industry in the, in the UK, this is the percentage market share in 2015. There were lots and lots of private label soft drinks, uh, for example, produced and sold by the supermarkets. Coca-Cola has nearly 15%, Pepsi 7%, and so on. If you were to add those top five firms excluding private label, you'd be less than 40%. So this is a less concentrated market, partly because of the uh, frequency and the preponderance of private label soft drinks available in supermarkets. Here's a good example of a highly concentrated market. This is the US energy drinks market. And we find this is an oligopoly. Nigh on 80% of the US energy drink sector in 2015 was taken by just two businesses, Red Bull and Monster Beverage. The others essentially fighting for the minor places. And here's a good example of something again approaching a duopoly. If one takes the broad US confectionery market in 2015, Hershey and Mars way out ahead together the two firms, a C2 ratio in excess of 60%. So in all kinds of markets, we tend to find that uh, the market is either highly or less concentrated. Here's an example of our carbonated drink sector in the USA. Coca-Cola and Pepsi dominating. Dr. Pepper Snapple in third. The others fighting with a relatively small market share. So the concentration ratio is an important measure of market concentration. And here's an example from the UK. This data takes us from the early part of 2014 to the autumn of 2015, and it's the market share of the leading food grocery stores. And of course, one of the interesting features here is the gentle but sustained rise to prominence of businesses such as Aldi and Lidl. And they're starting to put big competitive pressure on the likes of Asda and Tesco in particular. Now, there's a second measure of market concentration, which some students come across. Most students will focus on the concentration ratio. But let's just spend a couple of minutes thinking about something called the herfindahl hirschman Index, or HHI for short. Now, this is an alternative measure of market concentration. And the formula for calculating it is a little bit more complicated. What you do is you, you square the percentage market share of each firm in the industry and then just add those numbers together. And that calculates for you the HHI index. 
let's take a simple example, a market where there's only, only four firms. Indeed, the four firms have 100% of the market, as you can see, 30, 30, 20, and 20. So you square the percentage market share for each firm. Square of 30 is 900. Add them together, and you get a total index of 2,600. And you're probably thinking to yourselves, that's really interesting, but what does it mean? Well, the index could be as high as 10,000. If the market is a pure monopoly with one firm with 100% and you square that off. So the highest value for the HHI is 10,000. The lower is the index, the more competitive or the less monopolistic is the industry. And the index can reach almost zero for an industry you may have come across in your revision called perfect competition. Here's an example. If we take an industry with 1,000 businesses, each with just 0.1% of the market, then the index would only sum to 10 because we're squaring off 1,000 businesses and squaring 0.1. Now, the key point to take away from this, remember what I said about the concentration ratio? That a C5 ratio of more than 60% suggests a concentrated oligopoly. Well, with the HHI, the herfindahl hirschman index, a market with a number in excess of 2,000 can be taken as a rule of thumb as a highly concentrated market. Let me give you an example. If you have a local market for radio stations and there are just two companies with 40% each and two companies with 10% each, if you do the squaring calculation you can, and then sum them, you come to an HHI of 3,400. And that's well above our 2000 uh, benchmark. Now, the Herfindahl index is oftentimes regarded as a slightly more superior measure to the concentration ratio. The concentration ratio is useful. It gives us a nice quick overview about market concentration. But let's have a look at the difference here. Let's take a four firm industry where the top four firms have 85% of the market which in our previous slides and things we would have said was a really good clear example of oligopoly. Now let's assume that in each market uh, there are 15 firms each with 1% market share, uh, uh, sorry 15 firms each with 1% market share and they control the remaining 15% of the market. Okay so let's say for example these are the uh, leading four firms they have 40, 20, 20 and 5 now, they have 85% of the market, and if you do the calculation, the Herfindahl index is 2,440. Don't forget, the remaining firms have 15% of the market each, 1% each. Market B, slightly different market share for the top four firms. They have a very similar market share. Firm A, slightly ahead, 25%, and then 20, 20, 20. Again, the top four firms just have 85% of the market. And the other firms have 15%, 1% each. Then we get the Herfindahl index of uh, less than 2,000, 1,840. And then if we look at a, another example, which is more, it's closer to our, our chewing gum example, if you think back a few slides. In this situation in market C, one firm has 75%, the second highest firm just five, then the third three, and the fourth two, and then the other 15% is 1%, 15 firms. So we have the four firm concentration ratio of 85% as before. But this time, this time the Herfindahl index is much, much higher, 5,678. That tells us effectively, of course, the maximum is 10,000, that you can have a, you're close to a, a working dominant monopoly. So I've taken you through two measures of measuring market share. One is the concentration ratio and the other is the herfindahl hirschman index. Keep in mind that most of the exam data you get is uh, expressed in terms of simple market share stuff. So you'll be looking to calculate a concentration ratio. But hopefully the, the, the HI index is uh, worthwhile thinking about at least. Thanks for joining in on this topic. Many more topics on the 2 website. Hope to see you again soon.